Thank you for the introduction. First, I'd like to thank the Florida Pioneer Network for recognizing Village on the Isle for a Best Practice Award winner. Village on the Isle is an assisted living with 64 apartments. We renovated our building two years ago into household models and partnered with the Greenhouse Project. Our best practice was the household model with resident-centered care during the meal service in a home-like environment. Our goals were to decrease weight loss in the use of supplements, build better relationships between residents and staff, and to increase resident and staff satisfaction. How we went about this was we first went to our residents and talked to them and asked them to be a part of choosing the dinnerware, how we were going to set the dining rooms up, their meal preference and meal times. Then we went to the leadership team and requested that they be in the household during meal time and um, assist the residents and also eat with the residents at the table. Then we needed to do cooking classes for our care partners because care partners are CNAs and a lot of them did not know how to cook. And monthly household meetings were uh, put in place instead of large resident council meetings. So we met on each floor or household because their needs were very different on each of the floors. Some of the challenges that we encountered was this was a culture change for the whole community, not just for our staff, but our residents. We had residents that are retired nurses and they did not feel CNAs should be cooking in the kitchen or doing cleanup. We also recognized really fast that our care partners were not cooks and we had to teach them uh, simple tasks like making a grilled cheese sandwich and having consistency in how the uh, grilled cheese came out. And the uh, care partners had struggled with problem solving. They were used to leadership coming in and solving an issue. If a resident didn't like um, the menu that was served, they would look for us to make a decision where now with the household, uh, model, we were having our care partners solve the problems right in the household. The results we had were decrease in resident weight loss. And um, on four of our floors, we have uh, the household model and one floor, it was interesting, is separated the tables instead of all residents eating together, they separated the tables and had four tops. And in that household, they had, um, if there was any weight loss, it was in that household. We had positive and happy attitudes of residents and staff. The residents felt like they built these personal relationships and it wasn't just relationships around a resident and their care needs. They felt that they truly got to know the staff and, um, and the meal service was becoming more of a event and not just a meal, uh, you know, serving through just a meal. And then we also had staff referrals increased um, with this change in the culture. Here are two of our dining rooms that you can see they're set up very different. We have them um, at long tables and eating together, but one dining room chose they wanted to be sitting with um, more formal dining uh, service with tablecloths where the other uh, household wanted to eat on placemats. And it was interesting because the residents build a relationship between each other also to where um, if you look at the top one, the one gentleman was good with Googling menu items. So say it was chicken cacciatore, they were able to see, hey, what's chicken cacciatore? 
or one resident was really good with names and helped the other residents remember each other by names and just really built strong relationships um, that helped each other to be successful. So we've created a relationship rich resident directed living environment merging our philosophies with the philosophies and best practices of the greenhouse project. What changed with COVID? This was interesting because our seating arrangements had to change. Instead of our households eating at one table together, we now had to separate the tables and each resident is sitting at a table alone. They are uh, interacting between the tables, but it, it really is not the same dynamics in the household. And then staff could not be sitting at the tables with the residents. So yes, we're up on the floors and trying to keep the socialization there, but the dynamics in the dining room have definitely changed. But I feel the household model has allowed us to keep a lot of the similar uh, dining practices because instead of having one dining room with 64 residents, we have a dining room of 16 and we're just changing the tables out uh, four times or, or three times because we have uh, the four residents at once eating. Our motto at Village on the Isle is, I did then what I knew how to do. Now that I know better, I do better. My contact information is Carla Oliver at Village on the Isle, the lofts. My phone number is listed in email if anyone has any questions or would like more information on our best practice, feel free to contact me. And again, thank you Florida Pioneer Network for recognizing Village on the Isle and the loss on a best practice in dining services. Thanks so much, I appreciate you having us here for today. Special thank you to the Florida Pioneer Network as well as Leading Age Florida. We're really honored to be included in this uh, group of best practice winners for 2020. So thank you again. Um, as said before, my name is Holly Gedemy. I work at Lutz Healthcare and Rehab. We are a skilled nursing facility located in uh, Lutz, Florida. We, we're a nursing home. We're primarily focused on short-term rehab. Um, our PPD is about 850 a day, which is, which is pretty high considering we're a nursing home. But for what we do, I mean, we, we absolutely make the most of it. And I feel like a lot of the things that we're doing here can be incorporated, whether your PPD is 850 or whether it's 550. There's a lot of good takeaways here. So what exactly um, does restaurant style dining look like in a skilled nursing facility? So that's our best practice focus for today is talking about restaurant style dining. So first and foremost, we offer uh, flexible meal times. So we don't have any kind of set time that they need to come down to the dining room. It's two hour windows for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Um, they can pick and choose when they would like to come down, who they would like to come down with. Definitely gives them a lot more flexibility. They can kind of meet their schedule a little more like what they were doing at home um, and makes it more a comfortable environment for them. Second, everyone is encouraged to eat in the dining room. I know in a lot of skilled nursing, um, there's a lot of patients that eat in their room um, or maybe that, that, you know, they, they might go down to the dining room but they're not eating like, you know, off by themselves or, or what have you. We make it a very social experience. We encourage everyone to come down. We make it part of their therapy. Uh, so it's, we definitely have the majority of patients out of their rooms in the dining room. Uh, it's so important to have assistance from all your departments. This is not just our culinary department that makes this successful. Um, nursing is great. They provide two staff members for each meal. There's one staff member that's helping to feed patients that need that extra help. And there's another staff member in the dining room um, clearing tables and recording intakes and um, just there for supervision and, and helping out. So it's a huge, huge help. Our therapy department, they get involved. So uh, after they've been working with a patient, they may bring them down to the dining room. 
they get them their first beverage, they get them their menu, they get them all set up. So that's absolutely helpful. Um, at the end of service, all departments are responsible, whether it's administration or it's housekeeping, whatever, for getting patients back to their room. It's a great opportunity to meet with the patients, talk to them, just give them a lift back to their room. How was your meal today? How are you doing? Things like that. Great customer service opportunity. Uh, we do have our daily specials that we have posted uh, on the nurse's station. We also have it listed down in the dining room, different daily special for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Obviously, that would essentially be our cycle menu. So in addition to this, we have full menus. You'll see them pictured here on the screen. Uh, we have a full menu for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. These last the entire week. These switch out on Sundays. And then we have six weeks full of menus that we rotate between. So lots of variety, lots of things available for the patients. We do have guest meals that are available for purchase. Another great customer service opportunity is getting the family in, they're eating their food, they're kind of seeing what's going on. It's great for the patients, it really enhances their meal experience, having a loved one there. Um, and then the, what we make from these meals, we put right back into culinary, whether that be for equipment or things for the staff, fun things for the staff, whatever, it goes back into our department to utilize. Uh, lastly is our individualized liberalized diets. So uh, traditionally in skilled nursing, they have therapeutic diets. If you're a diabetic, you're on a diabetic diet. If you're, you know, if you're a CHF patient, you're on a heart healthy diet. What we try to do is have a generally healthy diet for everybody and then set people up to, you know, have an individualized approach to prepare them for what they need to do to kind of meet their, their needs. If you want to go to the next slide. Okay, so this is an example of our menu. Um, so what we do, so this is like our dinner menu, we denote certain things on the menu, like with a little red heart. So those would be our heart healthy menu items, when in actuality, they're just lower in sodium and uh, cholesterol compared to some of the other menu items, but everything in general is made from scratch, made in a healthy way um, to try to reduce overall intakes. Um, you know, we also denote on there uh, vegetarian, gluten-free, some different things like that. For our diabetics, what I try to do is, I feel like everyone manages their diabetes a little different. Um, you know, some people want the sugar-free options. Some people just want to go like with like a low carb kind of option. So we try to give them the tools to make them successful. Uh, and the biggest thing with that is having choices. So, you know, we have the regular sugar items, we have the, the you know, the sugar-free items, everything available for them um, and set them up for success with their diets. So measurements and effectiveness. So the biggest thing here is continual improvement mindset. There's no like we've reached where we need to be, like we're good, we don't need to continue you know, working on things. We're always working on things. I'm constantly talking to people asking what's working, what's not working, what can we be doing better? Um, we're looking at resident satisfaction surveys. All of our residents that go home, um, we mail out a satisfaction survey to them and incorporates a lot of stuff, you know, whether it's nursing, um, their discharge plan, all that fun stuff, but culinary is an aspect of it. And so we do get some feedback from them. We go to resident council meetings. We talk to our long-term care patients. Granted, it's only, you know, 30%, but those are our long-term care patients. We definitely want to hear them out. You know, what are they saying they want? You know, what do they want to see more of? Those kinds of things. Um, the biggest help for me is definitely ongoing meal rounds and observations. Um, I regularly help pass meal trays. I, this is a great opportunity to get in patients' rooms and see what's going on and, you know, how can I help you? What, what kind of feedback do you have? How are you liking the food? Those kinds of things. So some barriers and challenges that we faced um, is the acceptance of liberalized diets and really not so much from the patients and the families. Um, you know, a lot of times it's, it's from the staff who've, you know, worked in uh, skilled nursing settings for a while. And again, traditionally, if you're a diabetic, you're on a strict diabetic diet. Um, so really providing all the education to the staff, addressing all their concerns prior to putting this in, showing them the research, showing them the education that's involved. Um, and then, you know, let them know that you are talking to the patients. It's an individualized approach. It's not that you're just not addressing their needs. You're doing it on an individualized basis. So making sure all of that is addressed before you're completely switching over to a, an across the board individual liberalized diets. Managing the altered diets, um, you know, having the extended menus, that's a lot more food to have to worry about, you know, can regulars have it, can Mixoft have it, you know, really letting, especially your culinary staff, you know, educating them on not just, you know, mechanical soft can't have this, but why they can't have this. 
Um, you know, what we need to be doing, what are some of the different options that they can have, and really getting speech therapy involved. Speech therapy has been a great resource for us here. Um, our speech therapist is always down in the dining room. If they have any questions, they go to them automatically. I have them review menus, uh, but they're, a, you know, an underutilized source in a lot of facilities. Uh, but lastly, residents' difficulty making menu selections. So letting the patients choose their menus is great, but if you have someone with dementia or a language barrier, you know, what do you do if you're trying to get them to order for every meal? Um, our solution is we, we talk to the family. Uh, we either ask them to pre-fill out a menu for them. We like, I, I send the emails to them and they fill it out and send it back to me. Or I just send them like a very detailed food preference form and they send that to me and then I create a menu for them. But again, it's an individualized approach, kind of figuring out what we can do to best meet the patient's needs. So what changes have been made since COVID? Well, quite a few. Um, the biggest thing is unfortunately we've lost our beautiful dining room, which is heartbreaking. Um, but we've switched to a room service approach. Uh, so we're still doing, you know, the, the menus, the, the servers, we have all of that, but we're doing it from a, a room service type aspect. So um, the menus have changed. We now do disposable weekly menus, which is actually a good thing because now we can vary up the options a little more. So if something's not working, we can change it out because we don't have a set menu that's already been printed. Um, we still have the servers that go room to room to take the orders every day. So they're taking the um, breakfast, lunch, and dinner for the next day. They could do that every day. So we now have two daily specials for each meal. Previously, we only had one. Now we have two specials, breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and then a little bit more of a limited always available menu, but still pretty ex extensive. And again, it rotates out weekly. Uh, I've also added a snack cart, which has been a really great addition. Um, we always have the snacks that are available down in the nourishment room 24 hours a day, but I kind of wanted to go a little bit above and beyond on the snack cart to have some things. Um, I round with it, activities helps me, nursing helps me, it just kind of depends that we go around to the different rooms. Um, sometimes they just want a little bit of coffee, but we have, we have ice cream, I mean you see everything that we, that we have. We have some we have some feel-good food, we have some healthy food, a little bit of everything. A lot of it's shelf-stable, so if they don't want to eat it right then, they can eat it later. Um, so it just gives them more variety. Uh, plus, they, they like having people come by and visit. So um, I've had a, a number of patients tell me it's like the, the bright spot of their day. So great customer service opportunity. Again, my name is Holly Gedemy. Uh, I'm the Director of Nutrition and Culinary Services at Lutz Healthcare and Rehab. Um, it's been an honor having being here today. Thank you so much for having me. Um, please reach out to me if you have any questions about what we're doing. Uh, and thank you again. Well, I'd like to thank you for that really wonderful introduction. Uh, before I get started, I would really love to acknowledge and thank the Florida Pioneer Network for recognizing our company for this best practice. Uh, I would also like to thank Leading Age of Florida for allowing us to share this uh, with all the people out there. And I hope everybody gets something uh, out of this. But most importantly, I would like to thank our culinary staffs at the four communities that pulled this off and our residents that participated in this. Without them, we could not have done this and it would not have been the success it was. So thank you. So let's look at the pop-up restaurant series. What is it? How did we come about with this idea? So I uh, was up in Vero Beach and I walked into our COO and executive vice president's office and uh, Mr. Coxon told me he wanted to start a pop-up restaurant series. So that got me thinking, you know, what should we serve? What should we do? What should be the theory? Um, so I thought, what do I eat at home? What does the ordinary person do? Once a week pizza. Uh, I get a call, pick up some burgers, or maybe we'll go to a deli. So that was the thought process. Keep it real. What would residents do if they were living at home now that they're in their new home? So that's what we wanted to do. So the concept was a totally separate and different menu that we're going to serve people in a totally separate, different venue. And we would do things like divide up our dining room if we didn't have a second place to uh, accommodate. If we had private dining rooms, we would use those. The key to it was keep it simple. It doesn't have to be a gourmet meal. How many of us go out to eat seven nights a week and eat a four course dinner? Like I mentioned in the prior slide, I would probably get pizza delivered once a week to my house. So we wanted to keep it real, just like they were living in their home. Market, we would make sure and market, 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 advertise what we were doing. Don't take for granted that just because your residents are living in their community that they always know what's going on. 
we wanted to make it limited. Now, what that limit was, well, that's up to you. Some communities limited it to one night because that's all the participation they got. Some did it for four nights because they had a lot more participation. And we threw in a different style of service. Part of the meal was served family style. We wanted to get residents interacting with each other, communicating, talking, passing the food around. So that's why we decided to do some family style in every pop-up. So when we come up with an idea, we want to know, is it successful? Do the residents enjoy it? What can we do better? So these are some of the measurements that told us, what were we effective on what we were doing? So the first and best way was, were people participating? So in one of my communities, we would have 35 people one night come. In one of them, we would have 200 over four nights. Either way, it was a very successful um, event based on those numbers. We would ask them, we would put comment cards by every table and ask the residents, did you enjoy yourself? Some key things, was your food hot? Did you enjoy this new style of service? And most important, we asked them what you wanted to see. Is there something that reminds you of home that was personal to you that we can incorporate? And most importantly, every meal, every manager would go around and talk to the residents table by table. That is the absolute best feedback you can get. With every great idea and great event, there are many barriers and challenges you have to overcome. And here are a few of them. Labor, our probably largest cost. Equipment, do we have the right equipment? Do we have enough equipment? How about the skill set of your employees? You may be serving something that you've never served before, which was very important to us. We didn't want to serve what we would generally put on our menu. And do you even have a separate place to hold these events? So these were obstacles that we had to overcome at some of our communities. But with every challenge, we did have solutions for everything. The first thing we decided, we wanted to do it on one of our busier nights. The reason is we wanted to take some of the heat off of our main dining room. We have very large dining rooms and we will serve up to 220 people a night. So we thought it would be good if we ran it on these nights. With the menu, we were concerned about maybe the skill set because it could have been a different method of cooking. But we kept the menus very, very simple. Okay, so whether it was just pizza, like New York style pizza, pretty easy, or tossing pasta or stir fry, we wanted to keep it simple. This was more choices that we were giving the restaurants because it was a new venue. But within this menu, we kept it very, very limited. So pizza, pizza was pizza. But we did let them choose maybe plain with just cheese, pepperoni, vegetable, but we did keep it simple. Training, there was a lot of training that went on, not only with our staff, but with the residents. It was a new style and method of service. Uh, the residents had to make reservations well in advance. The table sizes were all the same. So we did either six or 10 tops and they were seated with other residents that possibly they've never eaten with before. So it was a challenging thing for them, something different. And we had to get creative at some of our communities. But if your community doesn't have a separate dining venue or you don't have room in your main dining room, you got to get a little creative. A pool area would be a great area to run one of these pop-ups right in the lobby. I even did one where residents would sit right in the kitchen. It was very limited, but we were able to do it. Or if you have a card room that's close to your dining room, any of these rooms will work for this event. So what did we learn for this? What's the next step? So like I said prior, we don't go out to eat seven nights a week and eat a large dinner, okay? Also, we have to understand that when you're sitting in the same dining venue every single night, it can get boring. So it has to be more than just about the food. It has to be about the ambiance. It has to be about the method and the style of service. But most importantly, whatever you do, you have to have fun and give the residents choices. Make them feel like they're at home. And of course, resident interaction with staff and with their fellow residents is very important to us. So most of you realize that we're in a COVID environment right now. And a challenge is 
can't run any of our pop-up restaurants. So we did have to think of other ways of keeping our residents engaged. So one of the things we did, we asked them, what did you want? What would make your day a little bit brighter? How can we provide an individual signature experience? The number one food, believe it or not, consumed in our communities is ice cream. So maybe it's on an impromptu thing, deliver ice cream novelty bars, ice cream shakes. We did smoothies and we delivered it to over 400 of our residents. So you've got to keep them engaged. A lot of them are choosing to stay in their rooms, but they still need the engagement with the staff, each other, and create something special for them to dine. So, like I said prior, my name is Jonathan Pinsker. I am the Regional Culinary Director with Axe Retirement Life Communities. Here's my contact information. If you have any questions moving forward, please feel free to let me know. I really thank you all for this wonderful opportunity. I hope you are able to use some of these ideas. And we're gonna finish off with a really entertaining video. I hope you enjoy it. It features our food and our residents. So have fun watching this. I never miss a pop-up because it's always something different. It's a really neat program because it gives us a totally different dining experience. It's fabulous. We have homemade pasta and shredded veggies on top and shrimp and it's and I have the Alfredo sauce. It's delicious. It's just the way they serve you, you know personal, they give you a personal service. The deli, uh, which was really neat. I love the pastrami <laughs> and cheese, it was delicious. An Asian one, and uh, an Asian inspired, it was a stir fry. Great mixture of fusion, if you will, and uh, including noodles and uh, spring rolls. And what was really neat about that pop-up and the others are the table settings are different. They go with like chopsticks and um, Asian colors. Crepe is a delicious thing to have and obviously we're not having that daily in the dining room so this was really neat. The appetizer was a cheese crepe. I love cheese so that was delicious. Then there was a choice of I think two or three different crepes for the entree and I had the chicken crepe. At a 50s drive-in diner which was really clever because our burgers and fries were served in a large cardboard, a cardboard uh, Thunderbird. <laughs> and we had potato skins that we shared in family style. I, I'm one of these people, I like lots of choices, so this is extra choices. Uh, it's something that's different that we didn't have before, and it's, it's a new experience. It's a special dinner, and as such you're getting a, a greater value, no doubt about it. It's always a surprise. While you know the basic ingredients, there are surprises in the presentation, and the taste and the unusual nature of the choices. And see the creativity of our chefs, uh, which is really impressive. Smaller environment in this large dining room, and so you get to sometimes meet new people. You're in a more intimate setting, so you have a social aspect of it that's a little, that's fun. There are seven people at a table. You're sitting at a table with people that uh, you just happen to have signed up at the same time, so you're eating with different people, a different dining experience. Sort of like going out for the evening. They're very popular. It's uh, one of those things now that uh, if you don't get there quick to sign up, you're not going to make it. Uh, the last one fit, filled up in 24 hours. It's something just new and exciting and delicious.